Hi. Yes, it's wah, 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 wah time again. Um, <laughs> my poor old speed up uh, Sony Nex VG30 camera, which is um, like my secondary B roll camera, but I also use it as the main camera for like my mailbag videos and stuff. And I went over to my old lab um, slash the new upcoming lab and I tried to shoot a mailbag video and it didn't work. Well, of course it's not going to work because the microphone has uh, fallen off as you've seen in a previous uh, repair video. I actually um, epoxy glued this back in and well, it didn't hold even with the uh, two-part epoxy. So yeah, I bumped it again and it just, I was like moving it around and put force on it. And yep, it just snapped off again. So I thought, no worries, I don't use the epoxy internal mic anyway. Um, because like, even though it looks like a shotgunny mic, it's not. I've, I've done a teardown in the previous video, which I'll link in. These are just um, standard little uh, electric mic uh, capsules in there. And it's one of these, you know, five plus one stereo surround bullshit thing. Anyway, so I thought, no worries, I'll plug in my external mic, because normally when I'm doing the mailbag, I'm going to be using my uh, little Rode video mic like this. I usually, for mailbag, I usually don't bother with the wireless mic, unless if you've seen in recent videos that I've been experimenting with the TV and the camera way back. Well, the problem with that is I'm going to go away from that because the problem is, is that I can't just hold stuff up to the camera because I'm not close enough. It's like on the other side of the room. So anyway, so I thought I'd go back to this um, and just use my uh, shoddy on the top. If you don't know, shotgun microphones aren't perfect. And when you're inside, uh, you know, like I am, and there's echoes and there's all sorts of stuff, um, then really you've got to be like a metre away from the microphone tops. Otherwise it's, you know, metre, metre and a half, something like that. Anything beyond that, it just, it really just doesn't work properly. Um, yeah, you get, you know, too many echoes and things like that. So shotgun mics aren't perfect, but if you're close enough, eh, they are convenient good enough. Um, so I thought, no worries, I'll plug it on top. I don't need this mic anymore and I can just run it. But unfortunately... Um, that's not actually the case because if I switch my mic on and we have a look at the little poxy, one of the reasons I hate this, uh, well, I hate this camcorder as a main uh, camera blogging thing is because it's V, it doesn't have a proper VE meter, it's just this poxy consumer multi channel rubbish here. Um, and as you can see, it's not working. Like, it's, there's no audio at all. So the, even the external mic doesn't seem to work for some reason. And I don't know why not having this capsule on there. I mean, these are just the mic inputs, that's it. Um, so anyway, I'll take this uh, top part again, which had the uh, board in here with the external mic jack and we'll see what's what. And check, check, check one, two. This is actually the microphone coming from the Rode mic now. So I'm pointing directly at me and it's working on my uh, Sony NX80 camera. So there's nothing wrong with the mic. And you can see here that there's what's called a uh, cold shoe attachment because it doesn't have any connections or anything like that. And there's a hot shoe attachment and that's got a proprietary Sony connection thing down in there. So you can put in like, you know, powered external shotgun mics and things like that. Powered, you know, lights and flashes and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, we should just be able to, that just lifts off. That's very nice. I like that. And we can access main board down there, which... Uh, as um, we saw in the previous video, we just lift this off, uh, a couple of screws on top, and then we can access the connector. So I guess the first thing, the microphone connector, so I guess the first thing to do is to uh, try and plug the microphone capsule back in and see if it just like magically works. But why, as I said, why that would have anything to do with the like external mic, it should just detect the external mic and then just switch. I mean, that's just silly, unless the new bang I've done is uh, has damaged the board in some way, but I don't think so. Um, Cause you know, this is like a magnet, looks like a magnesium alloy, uh, you know, casing and the boards all oh, really, oh no, okay, the board can flex. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say it's rigidly mounted in there, but it's, it's not really. Anyway, I'll whack the uh, mic capsule back in and see if that fixes it. 
Check, check, check one, two. There you go. The capsule is back and working. So let's plug in the external mic. It should auto detect the external mic and check. Yep. Ah, now, see, now it's working. I touch it. See, if I touch that, it's not the top mic anymore. It's working. So yeah, it needs that is really strange. Why does it need the external mic capsule in order to switch? Um, like, you know, there's probably like an extra contact on there that switches when switches from internal mic. You know, the, these mic capsules will be going into microphone preamps. And then um, this will just switch in. Uh, like it'll have a mechanical contact to switch in the external mic. But it needs that internal mic plugged in. That's very strange. And here we go. If I actually plug that in, watch that contact over there. It'll lift up like that. So, yeah, like, I'm just confused why it would need the internal mic plugged in. I mean, the mics, as far as I'm aware, didn't have anything in there. It was just direct connection to the electric mic capsules. All right, so let's actually plug our mic, external mic in. Yep, confirmed. Touching that. And let's pull out our electric mic and it doesn't, look, it doesn't work anymore. You, like you pull that out and it doesn't work. The external mic doesn't work. What the? Oh, I really need to re-watch my own videos before I do this. <laughs> yeah, the preamp is inside there. Oh, um, there you go. So obviously, yeah, to switch in the external. So the external mic obviously comes into here and then the switching is taking place in here. So like the external mic comes in here goes up here. I like, you know, you could trace out this. <laughs> if you're really that desperate, you could trace it out. But obviously the switch is happening in here and then it comes back out. So the external mic. So without this plugged in, yep, external mic isn't working. So there you go. But of course, well, uh, you could say that like, you know, a designer wouldn't have thought of that. Like, oh, if this whole head breaks off, oh, the external mic should work. So the mux should go up on, you know, this board up here, for example, like the actual uh, switch where it switches between, you know, analog switch or whatever it is, um, that uh, switches the uh, external microphone in, you know. <laughs> But for redundancy purposes, design redundancy purposes, yep, that would have been the thing to do. But obviously, um, uh, you know, you've got to have your preamps down in here like this for noise reasons, right? You don't want to be running your uh, your mics all the way back out. So, um, like the actual low-level microphone signals all the way back out, unless you've, like, got them shielded or, you know, shielded coaxes or something like that. Um, then, yeah, they, they go straight into the amps and then they've probably... Got a small switcheroo in there. Well, what I've done is I've actually bent uh, the metal uh, plate back in place here, which means I've been able to put an extra screw in there, which means that uh, technically now this head is physically connected. There's no matching one on the other side, unfortunately. I don't know why they didn't do symmetry in the design like that. They should have, just from, you know, a physical robustness uh, point of view. I don't know why, you know, the metal didn't extend there. Like, screws over here, screws over here. But there is one screw there, but it was bent from last time, so I didn't put it back in. I relied on the epoxy, um, and I've come a gutter. And anyway, so um, yeah, so this is going to, so the, this, this will be screwed into this side and I'll at least have one screw over here holding the head. So even without any glue in there, it should at least, you know, <laughs> shouldn't like come off with normal handling anyway. It'd have to be dropped again uh, for it to bend and shear off and the screw to break and all sorts of stuff. So um, yeah, anyway, 
there you go. That's just, a, <laughs> that was pretty much a nothing burger video, but it was interesting in that, like from a physical point of view, your microphones have to be up here. From a design point of view, your microphones are up here, obviously. So your mics have to, uh, your preamps have to be up here, close to the microphones. But then you've got to have the external input. The external input can't be on this same board as well, because that just like doesn't make sense from a uh, like a you know, design usability point of view. So you put it on the side like this, which is a perfectly fine place to have it, right next to uh, your shoe mounts here, where you'd mount your microphone phone on uh, but then that means that, well, you know, where do you put your switching stuff? Right, so I originally thought that uh, they were actually wiring from the microphone over the coax and did some switching in here and then came back, but it looks like uh, there's only four uh, 4580 op amps in there, dual audio uh, preamps, and there's another one in here as well, so it looks like the external mic doesn't extend past here, so it's not going over the ribbon. So there's a 4580, there's an NMJ2115, uh, I assume it's an NNJ, but it could be like, you know, Japan Radio Corp, or whoever's doing the 2115. And then, got two devices over here, I don't know what they are. So presumably, they're doing the switching up here. So the switching is done here, so the microphone signal's not actually going over the cable and back, I don't think. You know, you could look, you could try and reverse engineer this and figure it all out, but I, I couldn't be bothered. I just want to go back and shoot my mailbag video and I could actually hack this thing uh, to, you know, hack this thing to, um, there's got to be some sort of like, maybe there's like a sense coming from here, like is this external mic attached and then, well, I don't know, don't switch or something. I like whether that's deliberate, I can't see a reason why, or whether or not that's just a design oversight. I don't know, but either way, the end result is that, uh, well, it doesn't work without that, ex with the internal mic, which is just nuts. Ah, frustrating. Uh, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, design decisions that, in this particular case, have led to, have left to complete uh, inability of the product to uh, record any audio at all when <laughs> some idiot user has smashed off the ex uh, the internal mics you can't even use the external one so I guess that le let that be a lesson to you when you're designing things maybe you know not in all situations but like uh, le at least consider like redundancy like that it's not really redundancy but like not making the external amp reliant upon something that could have, well, I guess with hindsight, it's easy to say, well, could have been broken off if this thing uh, dropped. And then you can at least still use the camera from the external mic input. But in this case, you can't because of the design decision of where they put the switch in, in this thing. So that's interesting. If a nothing burger video, but at least, um, yeah, like I could have hacked this thing to like force it to uh, use this in some way, but I'd have to spend quite a significant amount of time on that. I just want to go shoot my mailbag video. So I'll simply plug the mic back in and uh, use my external mic as I intended. So there you go. If you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, comment down below. Catch you next time.